There's the electric motor. It's an armature, pair of magnets, pair of brushes that lead electricity back from the batteries that are mounted in the base. And when you turn on the switch and give it a push, it runs. This is the same kind of motor mounted in a wooden car. The cutout in the wooden block gives us a place to put the, the motor, which goes in the middle, and the wheels on each end. A set of batteries goes in these wooden blocks back here, and they're held in by a pair of paper clips that have been bent into a switch shape. So when you close the switch and give the motor a push, the motor runs. This is the winder that I made to wind more than one motor or to wind them easily. It's a arbor for a grinding wheel with a half inch bolt mounted through it and on the end of the bolt I took a block of steel cut a slit in it put a bolt through there to make a clamp that clamp will hold a block of this piece of steel that we use to make our armatures so that we can turn it longitudinally to wind wire on it There's another arbor at this end that simply holds up the far end. And when we turn the crank, it turns the armature in such a way that we can easily hold a spool of wire and wind it on. This is the armature after being soldered together with its shaft. The armature shaft is a piece of eighth inch diameter welding rod. The ends have been sharpened on a lathe and I've currently got one of these mounted in the winding machine so that I can start winding wire on it. To get started, I have several inches of wire that I want to have left over later so I wind those around one of the loose ends of the shaft. We're going to use those to attach the commentator segments later on. Then as I turn the crank, I can start to apply tension to the wire. This is 26 gauge magnet wire. And try to get the windings nice and tight in a single layer. This is easier to see because I've got two layers of yellow electrical tape wrapped around the armature core that insulates the armature so I don't short out the magnet wire. And as I get a little bit more steady on my winding I can go a little faster. So I should be able to get out to the end of half the armature fairly quickly. I'm putting tension on with my left hand that's holding the spool of wire. When I get near the end I want to start back again to put the second layer on as I head toward the other end of the armature. This simple device makes it fairly easy to get a nice smooth layer of wire wound on here. Makes a nice looking electric motor. When I get to the middle, I just jump over the, the edge and start again on the other side, keep winding in the same direction. With a nice neat set of windings like this, it takes about 18 feet of wire to put a double layer on the armature.
This scheme seems to give me a nice running electric motor for the little car project. Now at this point, got a little, a little carried away there. At this point I look to see how much armature is sticking out at this end of the windings and try to match it at that end so I try to keep the armature balanced because I started with it balanced before I put wire on it. Then I balance it by clamping it in a vise and filing the heavy end. In the interest of this not taking too long, there's a few gaps in the in the rows there, but it'll still work fine. And then I tie it off, cut the wire, and I'm done winding. So I can cut this off and leave a few inches of extra wire and then find the wrench, undo the, the nuts that hold the clamps together. I also have a collar at the other end that holds this clamp from walking off during winding. And there's the motor. And that's ready to have commutator segments added to it so I can have a finished product. So this is the armature as it came off the winder. About 18 feet of 26 gauge magnet wire on it. I'm going to unwind those extra bits that I needed because those are going to get attached to the commutator segments. Now this is quite a bit of wire but I learned a while ago to take this some of this extra and wind it onto the armature so that if one breaks I've got a little bit extra to make a repair with. So now I've got my two pieces of wire that I'm going to attach these copper segments to. Those become the armature commutator segments. So I'll cut those off at a convenient length. I like two to three inches of extra wire to work with. And I gotta go find my razor knife. I like to use a razor knife to cl clean the enamel off the wire. I find that it's quick and accurate. Some people won't want to do it that way. Or I probably wouldn't have too many of my students do it that way. I give them a piece of sandpaper, have them fold it in half, and just put it on the wire and pull it off. It works. The trick is trying to put it at the same spot each time while you rotate the wire to get all of it cleaned off. And then since I only need about an eighth of an inch of wire to solder to, I just cut off the excess so I have about an eighth of an inch of clean wire left over. And that's going to get soldered to these pieces of copper foil that will become the commutator segments. We make the shaft for the armature larger by putting a piece of vinyl tubing on it. The vinyl tubing is an eighth inch inside diameter, quarter inch outside diameter. I just slide that on so that I have the point sticking out the other end. Then these pieces of wire get soldered to those. I got a little fixture here and I made the commutator segment round by pushing it down over the shaft of a screwdriver. Just hold the screwdriver. One side's already been cleaned. It's nice and shiny. And I push it down and just smooth it down over the shaft of the screwdriver. That gives it the size bend that I want it to have. Now I'm ready to do soldering. A little bit of solder goes on each of the wires to tin it. And that will get, get them prepared for attachment. And then I put a little blob of solder on the commutator segment to tin that. So 
So now when I'm ready to solder this wire to the commutator, se commutator segment, I don't have to hold a piece of solder too. I just have to hold still while the solder cools and take it out of the clamp. I can turn that around, put my next commutator segment in the clamp. It's a very fancy clamp. It's a clothespin with a dowel glued into it. Get a little solder on the end of that to tin it. Grab the armature, put the wire in place, and reheat the solder. And hold still while it cools. Now I've got to get use up this excess wire. And for that, I have a little piece of 16th inch welding rod. I've got a piece of 16th inch welding rod, and I hold that next to the armature in one hand, and then just wind the wire around it. And that uses up the excess and makes a little coil that I can use later for adjusting purposes. And we'll do the other side. I never realized how hard it was to make a decent movie. Then these get pushed down onto the vinyl tubing and held in place with a piece of electrical tape. I've cut some skinny so that it doesn't take up too much room. You don't want to stretch this tape because this is all that holds the armature segments on. Oh, they're touching each other. You've got to make sure they don't touch. Check both sides, make sure there's a split between them. Okay. Now I can tape that on. You don't want to stretch this tape because as it tries to rebound, it will untape itself. Put another layer of tape at the other end. And my motor is ready to be tested. Let's see, what did I do with the test stand? Now would be a good time for a close-up shot. Here's the test stand for the motor armatures. Here's one that I just did earlier today. Here's the one we're working on. There's a set of brushes back here that are wired into the battery pack. These screws have dents in them to accept the armature and there's a pair of magnets mounted on the post. Put that in, set the screw, and it's a good one.